Uh, Bob Cole and Chris Stevenson. Uh, Bob, I think, is a native of LaGrange, and uh, Chris from the Sierras, but the Nevada side of the border. Uh, she was the homecoming queen, by the way, at her high school. Uh, so uh, that's where she learned her stage chops, I guess. You know? And uh, obviously now living in LaGrange. And they've had a band, they had many bands over the years. Their most famous one was probably Fiddlesticks. Uh, which existed for a while and then uh, disappeared and has recently returned, I think, with the last 12 months. They've restarted Fiddlesticks. Sarah Campbell was in that band, Dave Cavanaugh was in that band, and uh, it's certainly one of the favorite bands. And also, it was the host band for the first 10 years of the Strawberry Festival, so they'd open every Thursday night for the very first band. Of course, that's the tough set because that's where everybody's still back at camp um, mm -hmm. drinking or something. And uh, <laughs> so, they had to lure people down to the stage, get on High Ranch Radio, and plead for people to come down and fill up those seats on Thursday night to get the festival started. And they were very good at doing that. They also host uh, probably the camp that kind of defines Strawberry more than anything else. The famous Campo Bay Bob, also known as Camp -a lot You have to sing that last name. Camp -a lot Anyway. So people are always visiting that particular camp. What? Obey Bob. Obey Bob. It's Campbell Bay Bob. Yes. It's, the name is now been changed to Campbell Bay Bob. I don't know who instituted that, but uh, I don't think it was Chris, but that could be the case. Um, so, you know, this is one of the very few Bluegrass camps that has a stage set at it, uh, with a barroom scene, of course, at the stage set. Uh, so they essentially have their own little stage at the camp, and they do a show every night. And uh, Lisa Berman, and I were hanging out one night about one o'clock in the morning there, in the back of the audience, and she turns to me and says, you know what this looks like? A Fellini movie set. <laughs> and it really did. And uh, so today she was here and heard me say that earlier when we were introducing the film, and she said, I don't remember saying that, but yeah, that's about right. So oddly dressed characters, uh, strange people hanging around. You know, the kind of people that Bob and Chris hang around. Oh, it's just Bob, just Bob. The kind of people that Bob hangs around. Chris, Chris has to hang around with them too. So they play music every night, they host a fabulous party, and it's that sort of thing that makes Strawberry special, apart from what's going on on the main stage or the radio station or whatever, and uh, it's certainly one of the famous things about that. But that's not all they've done. Uh, Bob and Chris uh, moved to Nashville for a while and played uh, music professionally, and uh, then they came back home, as they well should, because Nashville, my hometown, is not nearly as much fun as California. That's why they're back here, and uh, that's why I'm here. And uh, the other thing they did was they went on the Gong Show and were very successful. You know, this was that negative kind of thing where you played and then people would boo you off the stage, but they were never booed off the stage because people loved them. And in fact, when uh, Chuck Barracks uh, actually did a retrospective and uh, a reunion of the Gong Show 20 years later, he had actually invited Phil Six to come back. And out of all of the acts he had, he picked like five or six uh, to do this last show. And uh, they, uh, they were one of them, so that shows you how much he thought of them. And along the way, they've had other bands hide the whiskey, and uh, currently they do a lot of work with, with a band called Faux Renoir. Uh, partly a family band, uh, Chris's son Michael is in it, and uh, they play all over the area. And um, needless to say, this is a band that is not straight bluegrass. You saw their set earlier here today, you know that if you didn't, we were going to have them come back and do one more song here. But uh, they do play a lot of music that's acoustic and fun, and it certainly works very well with the Strawberry Music Festival. And uh, so they fit in, kind of make that scene. And in the meantime, they also do other civic work around LaGrange and uh, play regularly there. And of course, the other thing that they were involved in for a long time was the LaGrange Fiddle and Banjo Contest, and also the Columbia fiddle and bango contest. Uh, they, uh, it had an unusual name because of a spelling error early in the history of the contest. Uh, and they decided they liked it so much they just kept it. So uh, Bob and Chris have made those things happen as well. The friends to us all, they play the good old fashioned Bluegrass Festival almost every year. We could hardly imagine them not going very long without being there. And uh, they're friends of ours, they're friends of everybody. And uh, we're glad to present them with Lifetime Achievement Award. So if Mr. Bob Cole, also known as Cactus Bob Cole, and Chris Stevenson, also known as Larry Bowers,
he, he covered all the territory that I would talk about. <clears throat> But I shall talk anyway. <laughs> um, uh, we were just little struggling, barely out of our teens, teenagers, when Charlie Cran picked us up out of the gutter and said, you guys should host our, our strawberry festival. He did it because we were so good looking with our instruments. We couldn't play the damn things, but Charlie knew people that looked good. Uh, and so and then so we went found Sarah Campbell who Yes, Sarah Campbell was in the band. And anyway, those first festivals were the most magical things I've ever, ever, ever been involved in. Except for some of Michael Hall's festivals, and Eric Berman, who is over here. So, um, I would just like to give a shout out to the to these guys over here who, who promote the smaller festivals, but inspired by Charlie Cram, and you guys do a great job. And now my wife will speak. <laughs> a rebuttal. <laughs> Well, Cactus Bob did uh, name his uh, camp Camp Obey Bob, just so that he could make people face the audience when he played. They had to do what he said. <laughs> I, I really think that the festival is, is like the way people should be when they go to heaven. It's just you sit down and you're there and you just have a beautiful time and everybody just has a good... The musicians and, and the people around, they just... They all gather around the music, which is the important thing, and the fellowship. And uh, the little festivals like the good old-fashioned is pretty fun. Larger percentage of musicians at that festival than anywhere. You can go through the jam, the campground at night, and five feet from each banjo, there's another banjo, or 20 feet from each banjo. It's just a good way to live, to go to those things where you feel like you're family. And... Uh, it's the music that keeps it together, but it's the human spirit that's the family. So, thanks to for letting me be part of this kind of life. Well,